Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Open Series Season 2 Invitational in Columbus. I'm Nick Miller. Alongside Chris Van Meter, how are you doing, sir? Good, how are you? No stranger to the sideboard, standard, legacy. We don't do a lot of modern, nope. but here we are at the Invitational, and you're playing one of modern's most powerful decks, Amulet Bloom. Yes, I am. How did you come to is, this deck? I actually think it's the most powerful deck. Oh. So I'm playing this deck because I think it's the best deck in the format. Um, I honestly, it doesn't play the same type of magic that the rest of the format's playing, mm -hmm. and I kind of wish they would just ban Summer Bloom so sure. I could play something else. <laughs> uh, but until that happens, I'm just going to keep playing it. Uh, it has the strongest raw gold fishing power. Uh, it's the only deck in the format, uh, at least that I can think of, outside of like a Goryeo's Vengeance type deck, that can actually kill its opponent on turn two. Right. Technically, you can kill on turn one if you're playing Simeon Spirit yes. Guides and uh, our Magicians, but I, I'd rather put. Play, right. it, play it nice and play fair an and consistent. Game. Yeah. Right. Uh, so we've seen this deck popularized. You know, we saw Matthias Hunt do well with it two Pro Tours ago. Mm -hmm. Then we saw, you know, Justin Cohen and Sam Black do well with it at the last Pro Tour. The iterations are basically the same, but you got some cool, you know, numbers in the sideboard. And we should go over how the deck functions to people who aren't quite familiar with modern. Mm -hmm. The deck revolves around Amulet of Vigor and these Karoo lands from, return, uh, from just Ravnica. Yep, the original Ravnica. Uh, so Amulet of Vigor makes it so that whenever any permanent enters the battlefield under your control tapped, you untap it, and it's a trigger. Yep. So if you have multiple amulets, you can stack it multiple times, which is the key to how you actually kill on turn two. Right. Uh, and then you have a card from Visions that was also reprinted in 8th edition and 9th edition that's Summer Bloom. Uh, it's two mana, it's a green sorcery that lets you play up to three additional lands this turn. So when you have the Karoos from Ravnica, which enter the battlefield tapped, tap for a guild mana, so like the Simic Growth Chamber gives you blue and green, right. uh, but you also have to return a land to your hand when it enters the battlefield. So you're able to stack the triggers so that it will untap from Amulet of Vigor, you can tap it for mana, and then return that same land back to your hand. So once you have Amulet in play, Summer Bloom lets you play the same crew three times, which equals six mana, which is the magic number for cards like Primeval Titan or Hive Mind. Right. Now, Primeval Titan, uh, will let you get two additional lands from your deck once it enters the battlefield, and they come into play tapped. But because of Amulet of Vigor, we get to untap them. So you're able to get Boros Garrison, which is the crew that gives right. you red and white mana, and Slayer Stronghold, which is a, a colorless land. Uh, well, all lands are colorless, but it taps for colorless. Right. And you can pay red, white, and tap it to give a creature plus two, plus so, vigilance, and haste until the end of turn. So once you get Titan into play, you go get a Boros Garrison and a Slayer Stronghold. You can untap them give your Titan haste, and then just return the Slayer Stronghold back to your hand right. or some other land. And then you get to attack with your removal Titan and get another trigger, yeah. which gets two more lands from your deck. Right. Uh, which at that point you can get like a Karoo and then a Teleria West, which will allow you to transmute it for like a su Summoner's Pact to get another Titan, just in case they kill your first one. Right. So you get to chain together Titans. If you have these two <laughs> amulets, you get to do things with Sun Home, which yeah. allows you to double strike on top of the haste. Yeah, so if and you have two amulets, you get two untapped triggers. So the first Titan gets Boros Garrison and Slayer Stronghold, which untapped twice, which let you activate it on your Titan twice, which puts it at 10 power. And then when you attack, you'll get a Vesuva to copy your Boros Garrison and a Sun Home, uh, Fortress of the Legion, which lets you pay four mana, tap it to give a creature double strike. Right. So since your Vesuva copying the Boros Garrison untaps twice, <laughs> that gives you red, red, white, white, which then you can give your 10-6 Titan double strike, which is a full 20 points of damage on turn two. Just kill them. Just kill them dead. Now it's interesting, like, you see the crew lands and they have the drawback where you have to return them to your hand, but with Summer Bloom, you actually want that because that's what allows you to really cheat the six mana as opposed to just playing lands like normal. Absolutely. There are games where you don't have Amulet of Vigor, but you only have Summer Bloom. Right. I like to, to refer to that as the slow dredge plan. <laughs> so we're not, you know, turbo killing our opponent on an axis that they're not prepared for, similar sure. to what Dredge does. But with Summer Bloom and the Karoo lands, on turn two, you can just cast a Summer Bloom and then play a Karoo land, pick up a land, play a Karoo land, pick yep. up a land, and then play a land. And at that point, you have five mana going to six mana on turn three, which is that magic number for Primeval right. Titan or Hive Mind. Right. Even if you don't have an amulet, you can just play a Primeval Titan the next turn, get Simic Growth Chamber, Teleria West, return the Teleria West to your hand, and then you have eight mana in play sure. and a Titan and a Teleria West in hand. So if they kill your Titan the next turn, you can have nine mana, which is exactly what it costs to transmute Teleria West for Pact Summoner's Pact, 
get another Titan, and then put it into place. So there's just lots of resilience uh, once you figure out how everything goes together. Play more of an honest game when you don't have Amulet in play. I but guess. you still just get to have six mana on turn three. I mean, if you three. consider turn three from Evil Titan honest. <laughs> <laughs> so you also have Azusa here, who's sort of like your other summer bloom, basically. It gives mm -hmm. you these mini ramps and allows you to do some other cool sequencings as well. Yeah, there's going to be times where you'll have like, um, a, a, you know, like two summoners packs, but but no summer bloom. Right. So those are times where you can pack first two to play it, and then get two lands, which you can still ramp with your crew lands, like you know, play a crew land, bounce a land, and play another land, and the next turn pay for your pact, and then the following turn you can go crazy with your with your uh, primeval titans. Yeah. Interesting note: you get to ramp with your crew lands with Azusa, but you have to be careful because if they kill it with the trigger in response you don't get to get that second land. That is correct. Yeah. But the way they change things, you're not able to designate which land drop is for it, so you just get a total number of land drops each right. turn that can be increased by cards like Azusa. So if the you know if you play your land, play Azusa, you have two more land drops. Right. If you play a Karoo land and they kill your Azusa, you just don't get to do anything. Right. So in that instance, it's always smart to just play a land that doesn't have a trigger, that way priority doesn't pass, and then you can play your last land for yeah. the turn. Now, of course, this all looks real great, and when you have opening hands that have, you know, turn two, you know, Summer Bloom off your amulet, it's great. But you have other tools to help you get there in some of these slower hands. You've got Serum Visions and Ancient Stirrings, which are both really powerful. Stirrings more so where you can get a crew land or your amulet when you need it. Yeah, Stirrings is very, very good, and you saw a lot of the early versions of the deck that had no stir Stirrings but Simeon Spirit right. Guide as a way to try and combo kill on turn one. But that is just way too glass cannon, yep. and I think that Sam and Justin had it on on point when they replaced all that with stirrings for the yep. Pro Tour. Uh, being able to find Amulet is awesome. A lot of times, like you'll have Amulet, but not a crew land, so you can find a crew land for it. And it also lets you play some sweet cards in your sideboard that you get to find with Ancient Stirrings. Uh, Serum Visions is just a necessary evil. Sure. It's you know a shiny turd. That's how I like to refer <laughs> to Serum Visions. Like it's 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 not a very good card but it's the best at what it does. Yeah. So we're going to play it as a way to find the cards that we need to find. It's the best you can settle for at this point. Yeah, if it was preordained, I think that you know the format would be much different. It's kind of yeah. it's very interesting how powerful just swapping the uh, yeah. the effects on the card are. Like scry to and draw. Yeah. yeah. So if you're playing like 27, 28 lands in these decks normally, you have way more than just these crew lands. You have a bunch of utility lands. We've went over Sun Home. We went over the Slayer Stronghold. Mm -hmm. Go over some of these other ones. You got a Cavern of Souls. You got Radiant Fountain, Colony Garden. You know, so much utility floating around in this deck. Yeah. So Primeval Titan is real sweet. How it allows you just to get any land out of your deck, mm -hmm. and you can just find lands with Ancient Stirrings. So something like Cavern of Souls is going to be very good against okay. control decks. Sure. So like the Grixis control decks, or really anything with Remand or Mana Leak. You know, you can just play it on Giant and then cast for Primeval Titan. Right. And once we get one in play, it's kind of all downhill from there, because exactly. if we don't have an amulet, the first one can just go get Growth Chamber Teleria West, which always turns into another one. Mm -hmm. um, and then post-board, we have some real sweet creatures that you can right. cast with Cavern. Something like Thrag Tusk is very difficult for like a blue-white-red control deck to, to beat by itself, right. so uh, it's pretty sweet. Radiant Fountain is good against the burn deck. Uh, it's just a, a life gain land. The original versions of the deck uh, played two Glimmer Posts, right. uh, but once M15 came out and we had Radiant Fountain, uh, you can just play Radiant Fountain and then you have room for another utility yeah, land instead of having to play. Don't need to chain two of those together to try to get the life Exactly. Game. Colony Garden is really sweet. Uh, it allows you to protect your Primeval Titan from something like Liliana the Veil, right. but it also lets you attack through an Incinerian Bridge. I, I've, <laughs> I've done that before where I've killed my opponent with just 0-1 plants by pumping it with Stronghold and then yep. giving it double, double strike with Sunhome. So there's just a lot of utility by putting a bunch of 0-1s into play. Yeah, it's the old Noble Hierarch being able to attack through Ensnaring Bridge, but you're using Slayer Stronghold instead to get that plus two. Yep, but being able to protect protect you from Liliana, and then like even in the burn matchup, a Titan is difficult for them to beat, but like once you Titan and then attack, your next set of lands you just get Colony Garden and Radiant Fountain. Yep. So you have an 0-1 blocker and your plus two life, which at that point it just kind of puts it out of reach. All right, so we got the land package, you got the Primeval Titan package, but then Hive Mind is this other piece that's just kind of floating around in the deck, kind of your oops, I win card, when in conjunction with Summoner's Pact, Slaughter Pact, and Pact of Negation. Yeah, Hive Mind just costs the same six mana as Primeval Titan, so it's that sweet spot with your Summer Bloom and your Karoos. Then we're already playing Summoner's Pact and some of the other packs as ways to shore up the game with Teleria West mm -hmm. once we get our engine online. 
So playing Hive Mind just kind of fits in naturally. And there are a lot of decks that might have answers for Primeval Titan or can stop us on that access, but sure. can't really stop the uh, Hive Mind. Earlier in the tournament, I played against Mono Blue Tron, and they actually just can't beat Hive Mind. Uh, but they might have a bunch of counter spells or you know, like repeals and stuff for Primeval Titan. So I just Hive Minded on three, packed a negation to his counter, and then cast a summoner's back, and he's just yep. dead. Nothing they can do about that. So you have all this crazy powerful stuff, but then the sideboard, I love how this deck transforms into a Thrag Tusk Hornet Queen deck in modern. Yeah. Talk about where those cards really shine. So uh, it comes from the plan that Justin and Sam came up against Abzan at mm -hmm. the, the last modern Pro Tour. Um, we basically just become this Tron deck where our plan is to just make our land drops and then cast all of these sticky threats that they have difficult time handling and eventually we'll be able to beat them because our top end is better than their top end. They're going to be concerned with the fact that we can just combo kill them on turn two mm -hmm. and prepare for that axis and then there'll be times when we'll just summer bloom and then play a Thrag Tusk and they're like, well, I still can't beat a Thrag right. Tusk. <laughs> right. Also the power of Hornet Queen against the Jun decks where they're just looking to one for one everything and then all of a sudden you just have four insects and the flyer. Yeah, really any of the green-black X decks uh, the Thrag Tusk Hornet Queen package is very good against them. Before, we actually played a Worm Coil Engine instead of the third Thrag Tusk, mm -hmm. since you can find it with Ancient Stirrings, and it's just like you know a very good card by itself. But I found with the number of Fulminator Mages that are continuing to go up, yes. I just want to be able to cast my threats post-board against those kinds of decks, and Thrag Tusk being five as opposed to Worm Coil being six, mm -hmm. I decided to play the third Thrag Tusk over that. Right. So you've got Three Leyline Sancti as your other kind of go-to card. This is for fighting hand disruption. Yeah, again, the green-black X decks, uh, it's very difficult for them to interact with us if they can't strip potential pieces out of our hand. Mm -hmm. uh, so Leyline's very good there. It also shuts off the majority of Liliana. Right, so can't make that's a sacrifice. Yeah, that's really the only way, the only repeatable type of card advantage that they have is Liliana with the plus one and the minus two. Right. So they can still make us discard cards, but they can't ultimate it or make a sacrifice right. a creature. Uh, and it's also just very good against, like, Burn and Storm. Now, obviously a deck that's playing all these non-basics is going to be pretty weak to Blood Moon. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of something everyone has accepted, which leads to Seal of Primordial. But you've got Chromatic Lantern in your sideboard. And this is a card that really got me thinking when you just land that after a person keeps a bad hand with Blood Moon or something. Yeah, Blood Moon is real tough for this deck. And uh, even to the point to where, like, Jund has been potentially playing right. Blood Moon in its sideboard which is a card people used to play to beat Jund. So wrap your head around that one. Yeah. Um, I've kind of just like conceded to the fact that there's going to be games where Blood Moon's just going to beat you. Sure. That's just something that's going to happen. Much similar to, you know, you're playing Dredge, there's going to be games where they just have like Grap Digger's Cage and counter your, your you know, answer for it or whatever mm -hmm. and Legacy. But with this, like we have Seal of Primordium, which kind of has cross hate against like Splinter Twin. Sure. And then I think that I can afford to play a Chromatic Lantern, which allows me to just still play Magic if they happen to land a Blood Moon. Because still, the decks that have Blood Moon, like Jund, you know, even if they Blood Moon me, I can just Chromatic Lantern, play a Thrag Tusk. They're not beating the Thrag Tusk. Sure. So. Also, you can find it off Ancient Stirrings. Which is pretty, pretty sweet. Cool. Two Pyroclasm for the fast decks that just try to swarm you. And then you got a Ghost Quarter as another utility land mm -hmm. and a Chalice of the Void here. Yeah, so we have Ghost Quarter, Chalice, and Engineered Explosives. All those utility cards that you can find with Teleria West sure. if you need to. Uh, Ghost Quarter is great against the Mirror. Um, it's also good against Tron, and it's good against Infect. Infect is a poor matchup for this mm -hmm. deck. And one of the reasons I think it's so good right now is because all of the green-black X decks are kind of pushing the Infect, the Infect decks out yeah. with all of the Abrupt Decay, Lightning Bolts, Colligan commands that are seen play. Uh, but I still want to have just a card that's good against them in the Ghost Quarter. Chalice is also great against Infect, since you're able to shut off the majority of their pump spells. Right. Things like Might of Old Crosa, uh, Vines of the Vastwood, etc. all have, you know, converted mana cost of one. So if you're able to Chalice on one against Infect, it's real, real good. Uh, but Chalice is also great against Burn, uh, and I've been bringing it in against some of the Delver decks uh, to some success. Uh, I'm still not sure if it's right or not, but I'll probably continue to do it since it's been beating my opponents. And an Engineered Explosives is just a, a great catch-all. Um, Chalice is also good against Boggles, too, by right. the way. Because Chalice, for one, they can't play all their terrible cards. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've talked about the deck. Now, this is a deck that a lot of people are hesitant to play because of its complexities and some of the interactions. You know, how do you go about learning this deck? You know, it's almost like a Rubik's Cube in terms of figuring out all these little patterns, all these sequences. How have you taken to the deck? Uh, well, uh, as you can see from this deck tech by itself, it's fairly long-winded. There's a right. lot of interactions in the deck. There's a lot of things to learn. But it's 
uh, Justin Cohen put it perfectly in his tournament report from the Pro Tour that he got second at, is the deck isn't hard, it's just weird. <laughs> so we're just playing a different type of magic, right. and there's a finite number of lines that you're going to use with different variables. You know, one amulet, two summer blooms. Two amulet, one summer bloom. Mm -hmm. No amulet, two summer blooms. Like, what are the different things you can do with those? And once you have played the deck enough to know the nuances of those different situations that are going to come up, at that point, then it's going to start to become competent with, with the deck. The biggest piece of advice is just to play it a bunch. Sure. So, you know, it's, again, very similar to a Rubik's Cube. If you watch people that do, like, tournament Rubik's Cube, you know, timing speed tests and stuff, they'll sit there and look at all the different pieces and see where they are, figure out what they need to do to solve it, and then solve it. Right. Whereas with this game, it's very similar. You know, you look at the known information, cards in your hand, game state, all right, this is the line that I have to take with this particular game state. Sure. And most of the time it's going to win because Titan is just absurd. Well, you're doing well so far. 3-0 after three rounds of Modern. Yep. Got one more and then some standard here in day one. You're looking to get your first invitation with top eight. Oh, man, I I'm want feeling bad. good for you this weekend. I want a bad. And I would be happy to take this deck into the top eight. Yeah. If it's not a bunch of Splinter Twin, I think I actually have a good shot at winning if I can do that. Right. Chris, thanks for joining me here on the sideboard. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Columbus.